how to get great care at your kitchen table. This is a particularly timely topic in that the pandemic helped make people feel more comfortable with the potential benefits of of telecommuting with their doctors. And it does seem to offer a lot of efficiencies for the physician offices as well. But as you will see, as we get into this topic, that as advocates, as you always do, you'll cover the pros and cons of why it may be a fit for some people sometimes and a not a fit for other people at other times or ever. So the first slide, as always, is a thank you to your host who's ever um, bringing you in to speak, whether it's a webinar online or in person. And it's just, as we know, um, it's just, it's a great and courteous thing to do to thank your host. But then also this slide is a great opportunity to introduce yourself. Now, we've never really covered this before, but it's been my experience that um, in terms of introductions, it, it, it's really helpful when your host, and they always do, will say a few things about you before you know turning over the microphone to you or allowing you to get started with your presentation. Um, if, if you can give them a short little paragraph about you, um, then you can ensure that, um, first of all, the information about you is accurate and also that they describe you in a way that you feel puts you in your best light. Oftentimes, actually, I kind of learned this the hard way that, you know, people who who write these introductions, like they'll, they might pull something from your LinkedIn or from your um, your bio on your website and, and the things that they pick out might not be the most relevant to the audience or, or really, you know, they're not the most important details to you. So um, just, that's just sort of a, a little tip, but in any event, you will introduce yourself again. And it's ideal here for you to have a smiling photo of yourself and your name credentials, of course, your company name how, and how to get a hold of you. And this is repeated in the final slide as well. It's your thank you slide it repeats all of the same information. The next slide is always a nod to the Care Partner Project. And here you can describe, and there is a, a little script about this slide and all of the other slides, or most of the other slides, because some of them are completely self-explanatory. Um, but this is, you talk about you as a community educator that you've been um, selected to um, uh, represent the Care Partner Project uh, locally. And, and, you know, if there's anything about the the site that you particularly like, of course, we'd always love it if you'd, you'd, um, you, you'd say what's important to you about this particular resource and what you think is important to patients and families and, or actually anybody. I, it's funny, I don't use that word patients, but, you know, I don't think any of us really thinks of ourselves as patients unless we're sitting in the, um, in the doctor's offices. Um, so I, I am correcting myself. This is for, for people everywhere, not just for patients. So today's plan with this particular presentation is that it's about a 30 minute um, topic. And the highlights are, it's when you might want to have a telehealth meeting with your doctor and why, how to get the most out of every moment. And then of course you assure them that after your presentation that you allow time for their questions and ideas. Uh, is this also a good point to let them know that you have a handout that you will email to them so they don't need to take notes. And that's important as we've discussed before. It, you know, you really want them to focus on you and not the page in front of them or feel like they have to scribble to take notes. 
So the first thing we start out with is that um, telehealth it may not be for you. It's not for everyone or not for every purpose. And some of those times when it, it, it doesn't fit is if you know or your doctor knows that you need uh, x-rays, scans of any kind, or blood work. Um, now, the exception to that is some doctors will say, okay, we'll meet by telehealth and then just go to the lab. And every community has one or more labs. So, you know, that, that may be the case, but sometimes um, physicians' offices want to do, you know, the blood collection on site for whatever reason. <clears throat> and that is actually entirely up to them. Or you might want be looking for a diagnosis that requires a more hands-on approach. For example, um, maybe the doctor really wants to take a very close look at that patch. You're going in for, um, a, a, you know, a dermatology screening for, um, you know, abnormal skin cells, and going through a computer screen just doesn't. Uh, make it. So you, you want the doctor or the doctor wants you to be right there so they can see exactly what's going on with your patch of skin. And that's just one example off the top of my head. Of course, there are many, many others. Or if you personally yourself have concerns about the security of personal health data, there are people out there who, who feel very concerned about privacy of any communication that is transmitted, um, uh, you know, electronically. And I'm um, grasping for words there because I really don't know how the internet works myself. <laughs> so it's like through the air, through the universe. They just don't feel comfortable of having information that's out there, which is perfectly, um, understandable. Or insurance may not cover. So it's very important to check first. So at times when you may want to meet with your doctor from home is that you can get an appointment sooner via telehealth. And actually, this is pretty common. And or you want to avoid um, contagious illnesses in a waiting room. Um, you might be immune compromised and the idea of going into a, a waiting room with a bunch of other people is, 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 is definitely um, uh, uh, dangerous for you. And I, I don't know about you, but more and more, I used to see waiting rooms that were segregated uh, and this was years and years ago. And maybe I'm just thinking about the pediatricians waiting rooms with my kids, but I don't see that anymore at all where there's any sort of segregation between um, areas of the waiting of, of the waiting rooms. Um, or you want to yourself avoid exposing others to the germs you know you're carrying. Or you simply want to save time. Um, your doctor is in, in an urban center and you're out in the suburbs and the idea of facing traffic, especially with all the construction going on, is just not something you want to deal with. Or you simply can't deal with it, especially um, if you have um, lots of other, um, uh, you don't have unlimited time, very few of us do. Um, and so it's kind of like a double benefit if you can save time and you can get an appointment sooner um, rather than having to wait, you know, a month out for an appointment. So those are, are very real practical considerations. Um, and you may want to see a doctor who's completely out of your area, possibly a specialist. You live in Cleveland and the specialist you want to see is in Indianapolis. That's doable now with telehealth. Um, and of course, then for second opinions as well. So here's where um, your advice as an advocate particularly really comes into play. And, and I hope um, you uh, will plant the seed is that it's good to prepare for any time that you meet with your doctor. And um, I deliberately use the word here, prepare as you would for an in-office meeting with your doctor. And the word meeting to me is very critical. And the reason for that is for years and years, we've been calling 
time with doctors in their offices as visits. And it's, it has this whole social thing attached to it. It's not a visit. And so by thinking of it as a visit, then it becomes, goes into sort of this more casual category. Well, it's not. I mean, time is limited and every moment counts. And so if we can help people, you know, sort of pivot on this understanding that it's it it's it's not a visit. Um, okay, you might want to call in an appointment, but the ideal is to think of it as a meeting with your doctor. And um, it is perfectly normal in meetings to have someone with you. Um, studies show that patients forget a lot of what their doctors tell them. This is completely normal because there's a lot going on. And, you know, there are actually people who have sort of this white coat syndrome of being a little bit tense when meeting with their doctors, and that's fine too. Um, there can be a lot at stake when you're meeting with a doctor. Um, you, you may be just feeling terrible and worried and concerned. And so this idea of having um, a, a note taker, somebody who's with you so you won't miss a thing, um, can be incredibly valuable. And that's, of course, where advocates um, by their side are can play a key role. Um, the other part of this is that um, now when you're going for telehealth, the caveat to this is that some doctors don't have the technology for multiple users. So, um, oh dear. I'm sorry, I have to add people who just came. I don't know where they are. I'm so sorry. I Maybe we have somebody else in the waiting room. Okay, I'm very sorry. I'm I'm pausing here because I have people in the waiting room and I need to let them in. Okay, I'm just going to continue on. Thank you, I'm so sorry. Okay, getting back to this idea that um, some some doctors' offices cannot accommodate um, a second person as part of the meeting because they, they just they don't have like Zoom type of technology. So in those cases where you can't be literally elbow to elbow with someone who is going to their uh, doctor meeting then you can join in using FaceTime or speakerphone. It's a, a little bit more logistically to set up, but it does work. So another good tip is to prepare, again, this whole idea that it's a meeting, not a visit, um, not necessarily just an appointment, is that you prepare your agenda in advance. Um, as I mentioned, the average length of a doctor's appointment is 15 minutes, sometimes a little longer. Um, but but regardless, um, it, it's it's important to make every minute count. And so, in advance, when you set up the time, it's really helpful to ask how long the doctor has actually allotted for your time together, and they can tell you that when you. Um, uh, set up the uh, the time when you set the date and time. 
So write down as part of your agenda, your goals for seeing the doctor, your questions, your concerns, and any changes in your health. Um, and it's really critical that if someone is going to attend the meeting um, with you, you are the patient and the you're bringing a care partner with you, um, it, it's really helpful to email this agenda to the doctor beforehand or upload it to the, the portal. And if you do so, it's really important to call the doctor's office in advance to let them know that you actually sent the notes or your agenda, um, because trust me, they get lost. Uh, they won't be seen. And um, oftentimes, you know, um, the doctor will scan them just before the meeting. And you might feel like, oh, gee, you know, I went to all this work and they're just kind of scanning over it, it does actually make a difference um, because uh, it, it just to get have for them to have a heads up about what are your concerns really sets the tone that this is all about you and um, it's that next step, um, crucial step in helping to ensure that um, it's patient centered care. So along this whole idea of a meeting theme, create a quiet conference room. So this is not a time to multitask or let the dog out. So if you know your dog is going to need to go out, you know, do so in advance or have someone else available to take care of your dog. And of course, it's great if you can make sure your dog isn't uh, barking at the screen uh, or anything else that there aren't any other distractions have your supplies on hand, make sure you have a notebook, a pen, um, write anything to write with, especially if you are alone. But ideally you will have that care partner with you who can help take notes uh, for you. Have a list of your medications, uh, the supplements that you take, any vitamins, herbs, any non-prescription drugs. And in fact, in of course, as long as you're at home, it would be great if they're right there on the table with you so you can actually show them to the doctor if necessary. Any medical supplies that you use, um, it's great to have those right at your, at, on, your on your table as well. Um, who knows, the doctor might ask you um, to take your blood pressure right there if the doctor knows that you have a blood pressure cuff at home. And many people do now. Or if you, and many people also have pulse oximeters at home and thermometers. So it's very possible to take some of these critical um, um, uh, uh, readings uh, from your kitchen table. Before you um, ever, <laughs> before the time you're allotted time to meet, it, it's really important, not the last minute, to test your computer, camera, and sound. Uh, everybody knows Murphy's Lot, so figure on it um, and just make sure that you're set up with your camera and sound on your computer prior um, to your meeting. And, um, and, and, and two, you can ask to test your equipment with the doctor. So just call the doctor's office and say, hey, I just wanna make sure that everything goes seamlessly can you give me the login? Can we just do a quick dry run? And um, and and they they should be able to help you and and should be um, quite interested in the fact that you want to make sure that nothing goes wrong. Um, so uh, that's just a little troubleshooting that can have big payoff. And then test your own technology at home. Um, the day of, um, just because it worked yesterday. And again, remembering Murphy's Law. I think all of you know that I have had um, very, very spotty internet connections because I moved into a new place in a high rise that's surrounded by high rises. And all of a sudden, the technology that I counted on for years had a lot of different challenges. And it's taken me a long time to get them figured out. And um, and it really took me by surprise and all of you suffered in pain with me for those first few times. And I, so I didn't follow my own advice here in testing 
uh, my own internet connections before I leapt onto some calls with all of you. So good lighting is key. Show your natural self. It's medical and not vanity. Um, physicians gauge your wellness um, based on, you know, your, your coloring. So try to sit in a spot with a window in front of you or at your side. Um, and if window isn't available, lamp or overhead lights, but not too much light because then it can wash you out and not too many shades like lamp, uh, like, um, like blinds or, or drapes. So it's just the whole um, goal of to get as natural lighting on yourself as possible is, is not overkill. It really does make a difference. So that's something I think a lot of people won't. And that's another thing, like a care partner who's there with you by your side or who, who, who joins by FaceTime. And this is where, you know, of course, advocates can play a role. They can help make sure that the lighting, they know you as the patient and, and they can help you adjust that lighting. So if the doctor's running late and this does happen, don't, and this, and this, and actually um, Andy Giblin in Charleston was telling me about this. People have a tendency, oh, they're, they're late. Well, I'm just gonna log off. No, um, don't, <laughs> don't log off, continue waiting. Your turn will come. And typically what happens is the office will send you messages if you're, if the doctor is running late and, and typically too, the, the, you know, they're not being rude. It's just, it, it, it's very helpful to understand that they see other patients and some things might come up um, where there's a complication and, and the doctor is needed um, with a patient um, before you. And then finally, Speak up for plain speak. This is a message that kind of permeates a lot of our decks here at the Care Partner Project. And um, it's very important that in any meeting with any doctor anywhere, that if the, the vocabulary that they're using is just Greek, it ju they just don't understand it. Just ask for a translation, ask to speak in very plain terms that um, you can understand. So um, finally, um, if uh, you re can restate at the very end, I'm sending you these notes. Um, I've collected your email addresses on the sign-in sheet. And if, um, and if you haven't done so already, please uh, fill in your, your email address. And um, you can also pick up um, many of these same uh, points at the carepartnerproject.org. So all you do is you click on at, um, uh, www.thecarepartnerproject.org and you'll see a banner at the top under doctor appointments. There's a drop down, and the second um, uh, line on that drop down says telehealth appointments. And so you can just uh, go there anytime um, as, a, as a refresh of what we've covered here today. So here um, is the next slide where you open it up for discussion. And then this is your thank you slide. Again, um, put your um, headshot here and a recap of, of course, your name, credentials, um, all of your contact information. And um, your um, ask here is if this is presentation was helpful to you, please spread the word about um, today's presentation.